Welcome inside Humphrey Coliseum in Starkville, Mississippi. The Mississippi State Bulldogs hosting Arkansas about halfway through. They've got a seven-point lead with uh, Damian Fishbeck, the former Auburn star, Kevin Fitzgerald, with you. Damian, this Mississippi State team, they are playing well. Things going in the right direction. They've won back-to-back and looking to take care of business at home today if they want to win three straight. We know it's a hard-knock life for Mississippi State opponents when they come to the hump. Knocked off Auburn and Tennessee earlier this season. Yep. They're trying to make it very challenging for the Arkansas Razorbacks. And now their offense is beginning to catch up with their defense. Yeah, now 5-6 and six in league play and looking to get back to 500 in the SEC standings. They have attacked the paint early against Arkansas. Tolu Smith draws the foul on Makai Mitchell. Smith, the premier force in the paint, has been the go-to man and the leading scorer for Chris Jans' Mississippi State Bulldogs. So, you like some of the numbers? We crunched them. Their net <laughs> numbers, there it is right there. You know, they played a difficult schedule in the non-conference. They were tested with wins against teams like Washington State, who's right there behind Arizona in the Pac-12 standings. Arizona State beat Rutgers. And like you said, they've got a couple of signature top 10 wins against Auburn and Tennessee already. So they have displayed some good basketball this season. Yeah, Kevin, we're seeing resumes all over the country this, this time of the year. It's, it's Joe Lenardi time. What, what was most important on that resume was the three and six in quad one games. And the reason why that's important, it shows you that this team has been battle tested. You think about the first eight out of nine games in SEC play, were quad one games yeah and so where people were discussing and saying mississippi state hasn't proven they can win on the road well they were playing some pretty tough road games and they've proven uh the naysayers wrong they went on the road at missouri and now they're back in the confines here at the hump Tremont mark misfires from 18 feet mitchell puts that one back through so makai mitchell has six in, in, in short, I mean, this team has played a lot of tournament caliber teams, sure. and they are one themselves, looking to make it back-to-back appearances in the NCAA tournament. Davis had the flashy crossover, couldn't finish it with the jumper, so the ball is going back to Arkansas with 8.33 to go in the first. Yeah, and, and let's remind people, Kevin, this Mississippi State team, similar to Arkansas today, Brazil is out. Trevor Brazil is out. Jalen Graham is out for this game today as well. Mississippi State has dealt with injuries. So Tolu Smith missed the first half of the season. Uh, you've got DJ Jeffries that is still out right now, available. He did practice a little bit yesterday. And so as teams deal with injuries, you have to look and see what type of teams they are now later on in the year. Mark hit, uh, can't hit the off-balance runner. Jones into the paint. That's through. Yeah, right now, Mississippi State continues to get whatever they want in the paint. They now have 20 of their 25 points in the paint. If you're the Razorbacks, you've got to man up. You've got to show some resistance. Keep yourself in front of the basketball. All right, so where are the other five, right? Maybe something from beyond. No, five free throws as well. So they have hammered it inside. Count that basket for Tremont Mark, Arkansas's lead. You've seen kind of the up and down, the ebbs and flows. Now, they'll continue to try to prove themselves as they have a tough and rugged schedule going forward. But first and foremost, they need to take care of business at home against a hungry, desperate Razorback team who, in my opinion, has shown in this first 13 minutes that they have come ready to play today. Yes, yeah, a pretty good fight, especially in recent minutes. Makai Mitchell inside trying to match the, the will and the physicality of Mississippi State. But it just f seems like now, Damian, the point you're making, we're past mid-February. If you're a team like Mississippi State... Hubbard, by the way, got fouled. Oh, it's an offensive foul on Bell. So Arkansas will take over with 7.19 to go. Your team like Mississippi State, just how critical is building that momentum right now heading into March? Yeah, well, we'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later, a little foreshadowing, right? But I think it's valuable for Mississippi State because 
their record to me is not indicative of how good they can be. A top 25 team, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, but they've got to prove it, not only to themselves, but to the committee. You know, if you want to advance in March, seeding is valuable. It's important. And Coach Chris Jans, who is top five amongst active coaches yep. in his winning percentage, knows exactly what to do to put this team in position. They've got the early lead. They have led essentially since the opening tap. They have been astonishingly efficient on this end of the floor. That's just the fifth time they've missed a shot. So they're 66% from the floor. They're 10 out of 15 shooting here in the early minutes. Make it 67. I got to round up a digit. Good enough. <laughs> Mississippi State with wonderful defensive effort in this first half against Arkansas. They've turned them over five times. And there is a foul, though, against the Bulldogs in the backcourt. So that goes against Deshaun Davis. You know, for fans who are watching this game and they say, well, Mississippi State's only up five against a Razorback team who's 12 and 12, I think you need to be reminded of the talent on this team. Think about Khalif Battle. Uh, Khalif Battle averaged 18 and 27 uh, games over at Temple. You think about Keon Metafield Jr., who's not currently in the game, but he's a guy who put up 32 points. He was an SEC player of the week. Tremont Mark and the success he's had at Houston, Davenport. Lawson, there's so much talent and the ability to score, they just have not figured out how to get it all to mesh together. Battle, aggressive baseline drive. He's got it now. Right block, lost it on the way up. There's a foul on Jones, so that's his second. Battle presumably headed to the free throw line. Yeah, it's an Arkansas team. Yes, it's it, they, they've struggled. It's been a frustrating year at certain points. Sure. Yeah, they've won a, a couple. They've split their last four wins against Missouri and against Georgia. I think the key moving forward is just the work that they can do on the defensive end of the floor. Battle makes that first free throw. So double header later today on ESPN Top 25 Battle. Kansas has to go back on the road. And they'll be inside the Lloyd Noble Center to take on Oklahoma. And then, hey, game day was in Auburn earlier today. Kentucky, Auburn at six. That is our primetime matchup. Yeah. Inside the jungle. Yeah, Bruce Pearl has just done a phenomenal job. One of the best turnarounds that I've seen in the history of college basketball at Auburn. They will be matched up against what I feel like a cat team, wildcat team that's healthy, hungry. This is the time of the year that Coach Cal's teams usually start to turn it. He said himself that they are built for March. We will be able to see that in Neville Arena tonight. Another turnover, so ball back to Arkansas. Yeah, Auburn playing in that arena. What is that? It's like five, six points right there. Just playing at oh, home. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I, well, you think about it. Auburn's 20 wins this year have all come by double digits or more. Yeah, yeah. And so when they beat you, they really beat you. But for Kentucky, they have the length. They have the talent. They have the athleticism. The question will be, do those young freshmen, do they have the fight to go in and win a game like that in Neville Arena? Yeah, they will be uh, significantly tested. Davenport on the way in. Hands off to Lawson. Bailed him out. He's got to improvise. Nice. Battle. Yeah, great movement. Cutting on the baseline. Remind you, this is a Razorback team. I know it was a long time ago. Knocked off Purdue in an exhibition game. Beat the Duke Blue Devils. Had Kentucky down in the first half. Knocked off Texas A&M. They can compete when they show up to play. Murphy's triple is offline. And Jimmy Bell Jr. cleans it up. Heads to the free throw line for one more. Uh, Chandler Lawson is 6'8", 210 pounds, and just had no chance because Jimmy Bell Jr., the West Virginia transfer, is 6'10", and 280 pounds. He's one of what I would call college basketball heavyweights, like a Zach Eady, a Donovan Klingin, a Eric Dixon, a Jaden Ledee, Ledee over at... Um, at San Diego State. Those are some of just the big guys that when you face them, they're heavyweights. <laughs> Chandler Law, he's marked up against Chandler Lawson. Different weight class, I agree. To your point, Ellis, strong drive, and he lays it up and in. So the boxing match is beginning to unfold. We mentioned at the outset, this would be the strength of 
Mississippi State versus the speed of the Razorbacks. Murphy, oh, he fumbled it on the way up. Had a clear dunk. And then Bell gets tied up. So the possession arrow favors the Razorbacks. Arkansas have it with a chance to take the lead. Absolutely love it. Mississippi State got off to a dominant start. They got anything they wanted in the paint. And what Arkansas has done differently is they're simply staying in front of Mississippi State. They're trying to turn the Bulldogs into a jump-shooting team, and they're not turning the basketball over, which would allow the Bulldogs to get out and score in transition. Damian, Arkansas has not led at any point in this first half. You're right, Mississippi State took an early lead, led by as many as eight, and they have it now after the Davenport miss. Kevin, we mentioned that one of the reasons why the Mississippi State had a turnaround was because Josh Hubbard was inserted in the starting lineup and at the point guard position. One of the reasons why I think the Bulldogs are struggling to score is because he has two fouls and has been on the sideline for the majority of this first half. Yeah, for, for much of this half. Murphy is stuck on the baseline. Spitz got it. Recognizes the shot clock is draining. Couple of long strides to get to the rim, but he misses another layup. So he's missed three now right at the rim. He's got seven points and two rebounds in the first half. Battle finds Mark. Jab step. And Shaquille Moore. Boy, he is hounding him defensively. Ellis on the drive again. Off the bounce. Finds Battle. Puts it up. Mm. That one's down and out. Looked good before it popped out. Now Matthews attacks. And he draws the foul with 3.16 to go. Mississippi State has that one-point lead at home. And he said, you know, Damian, we lost a legend today. He said, Lefty Giselle brought so much excellence and passion and personality to the game. He said, I love knowing him and having the opportunity to compete against him. And yeah, the ultimate salute from one of the best to ever do it as well in Cliff Ellis. Naismith Hall of Famer nine times. Nine times he was named a Conference Coach of the Year. Yeah, and he made many stops. He was at Maryland, as we mentioned. Coach James Madison, Georgia State, Davidson played at Duke way back in the 50s. And so, rest in peace. Coming up on the three-minute mark in Starkville, three in the corner from Tremont Mark. That one is on the mark. And yeah. so the Razorbacks have knotted it up. Coach Jan switched to a zone on that time. Both coaches made a chess move. How about that? Looks like Arkansas has changed to a zone as well, which is, I like the move because Mississippi State has not made a three-point shot today. Uh, they've only taken two. So everything from the Bulldogs has come into the paint, but they don't need to settle. They need to continue to attack the paint. Oh, that is Bay Fall who just met Murphy there on his way up. But okay, there's a triple. Hubbard hits it. So Bay Fall's cameo is uh, overshadowed by the Hubbard triple. <laughs> well, that was an impressive play on the interior. Mississippi State back in front by three. They've lived for the majority of this first half. Fall, he shuffled his feet, so that's a walk. Yeah, they saw a little anxious on that particular play, and he wasn't anxious on that play. A tremendous block that time, and battle just late to the party. And as soon as Josh Hubbard gets it, once again, that's that elevation we talked about that allows him to shoot up and over defenders at a high level. On that prior replay, you could see Battle just throw his hands up. He's like, what, what more can I do? It's unexpected when a guy 5'10 gets up higher than you on his jump shot. Well, lock and load. Here he goes again. Tap back out. Hubbard pounces on it. Head fake goes up. Mark knocked it away. He smothered him. And so Arkansas in a hurry the other way. Ellis passes up the transition three. Davenport Pretty. on the way in. Off the bounce. Can't finish. Yeah, but I like the offense. Arkansas starting to figure it out that basketball's moving. It's popping. It's not sticking as I've seen it before. Smith gets it to Hubbard, and so he can run some stuff. Hubbard off the ball screen, puts it up, leaves the three short. Matthews, a very active catalyst, got his hands on it, and that leads to a tie-up. Matthews says, this is mine. I'm taking it. <laughs> said, hey, don't. Uh... 
mess up my sleeve here either. Yeah, but that Coming tenacity. To play some ball. That tenacity is part of the reason why Mississippi State has had so much success of late. They're going to be the more physical team. You're not going to out tough them. You may shoot better than them. You may handle the basketball better, but you won't be a more physical team than Mississippi State. Chris Jans, you got to check this article out. Jack Byers wrote HailState.com. He goes, Cam Matthews, he is our leader, our heartbeat. He is our personality, that tenacious personality. Murphy follows there. And there's a timeout by Mississippi State. We'll step aside for 30 seconds. 107 to go in the first. Bulldogs back up by five. This point, he's got a few points. He's got six points. A couple of rebounds, a couple of assists. It's a surprise. We have no steals yet. Look at the bottom right. Career high seven a week ago against Missouri. Yeah, impressive. And, and Arkansas, equally impressive for the most part defensively. There is. Uh, you know, the Razorbacks actually had 39 steals in their last four SEC games. Just wasn't able to convert as much. But for Mississippi State, I think this is the end where it has to start defensively. Murphy clears the rebound. But there's no push. You see, Kevin, when, when Hubbard is in the game, they have a much better push versus when he's out of the game, it's much slower pace. A little more methodical here. It's Davis and Moore. The two guards in the backcourt here for Mississippi State. Davis, the spin, back out to Murphy. He takes wow. off, got blocked. Tremont Mark has a couple of blocks in this first half. Well, I love the way the big man Murphy not here. is going to the basket. And the, the length of Arkansas is probably underestimated. You know, you think about Tremont Mark at 6'6". We've got... Khalif Battle, who's 6'5", Davenport 6'6". So they're long on those wings. What do the, what do the Bulldogs do here? They got three to shoot. Find Murphy. There's a giveaway. So that was just a scrambled sequence. Yeah, we, we talked about it a little bit before this game, how Hubbard being inserted at the point guard position at the starting lineup really changed the offensive dynamics of Mississippi State. And you can see that with him out of the game. With him out of the game, they have to just do so much more defensively to try to get out and transition and create their offense or go to the offensive glass versus when he's in the game, it moves quicker. He's a bigger offensive threat, and they're just much better. Remember, the high-scoring freshman on the bench, he was whistled for two fouls pretty quickly. So presumably the final possession for Arkansas, 13 to go in the first half. They're down five. They have stuck with... This Bulldogs team, Ellis attacks, floats it up, bounces out, three seconds. Davis could let something go behind the back. That's nearly uh, from Caitlin Clark, moneymaker distance there. So after 20 minutes, Mississippi State leads by five. Yeah, we see 13-1 and one when leading at the half. The Razorbacks one and four. We're, uh, if you're interested in the Mississippi State resume, they've got a, a great uh, a respectable if you will net ranking they've won back to back they've got a couple of signature wins in conference they're trying to make it three straight wins and keep building that momentum well let's be frank if you're mississippi state you don't want to get to the bottom uh of joe lenardi's last four in you don't even want to be in the last four buys you win this game you continue to win and make sure that you place yourself into the ncaa tournament chandler lawson stretches and hits from 15 feet and so arkansas uh, the team that led for just a few minutes of that first half they have the first basket after the break tolu smith is going to the free throw line after the miss at the rim well, tolu smith is just one of those guys that has continued to stay in college basketball a very long time you think about from coming from western kentucky and the job that he has done since coming to mississippi state but he's been injury prone he told me yesterday at practice, he said, this is the healthiest that I've ever been. And you think about the preseason expectations, preseason All-American, second team uh, by Blue Ribbon. Uh, Dickie V, shout out Dickie V, had him as his SEC preseason player of the year. Uh, this is a guy who I think could be a first-team All-Leaguer for sure. Yeah, he seems like he's trending in that direction. Somebody who is cognizant of his, perhaps, legacy with this program. 
the Bay St. Louis, Mississippi native. So the home state kid on the drive in. Battle fouled. And that's the first on Shaquille Moore. You know, Kevin, playing in so many of these games over my career, you always can get a pretty good feel. And right now, I get the feeling that Mississippi State's like this isn't Auburn, this isn't Tennessee. We erased all doubt. We went on the road at Missouri. They think that Arkansas is just going to go away. The Razorbacks are not going away today, and the Bulldogs better recognize that very quickly. Three to shoot. Davis steps mm. through, missed it with the left. Nice move, though. Devo Davis, one of those culture guys in the SEC. How about Shaquille Moore? And we got an offensive foul. That is an illegal screen on Tolu Smith, his first. So a couple of rusty possessions right out of the shoot here to start the second. Well, that was Terry Oglesby on the call there. And I, I think it's the correct call. Now, yeah. Tolu Smith has a right to seal the offensive player, but that left arm was up. And it was holding Chandler Lawson, which is the reason why Terry Ogilvie called that foul. He's using the body. He's clear once you start swinging an arm out. Yeah, you're going to get in trouble. So now Mark going back to work. Jermon Mark, six points in that first half. He is Arkansas's leading scorer. And is top five in the league, going for 17 a game. Three to shoot. Off the bounce, rises, uses that long reach to get over his defender, but the rebound is cleared by Smith. Nice defensive trip. Look at the pop here, though, offensively. You get that with Josh Hubbard in the game. They were missing that in the first half with him having the two fouls. 13 in the white. Matthews cut off on the baseline by Mark. Mark doing some yeoman's work here defensively. Smith spins on Lawson, goes up with the left, had that one impacted by the big man. And Arkansas back into the front court. Battle takes it and got it, and the foul. That is exactly what Eric Musselman is imploring his team to do more of after the Tennessee loss. Battle got it. But this all began with the defensive stop. See, Arkansas, who does not have a quote-unquote true point guard, L. Ellis is a scoring point guard. Uh, Minifield is a scoring point guard. But when they get stops and get out in the transition offensively, it's just basketball. It's just ruck the park. Go out and do what you need to do to get a basket. That's what we're seeing from the Razorbacks now. And so Battle is in a bit of a groove today. Arkansas, Damian took just four free throws in that first half. And if you ask Eric Musselman, he, he wants a, a very high free throw rate, if you will, on a game-to-game sure. -game basis. He wants his team to get to the line quite often. And so they do so quickly in the second half. One-point game in Starkville. Smith lost the handle, so Arkansas can take off. Battle gets fouled by Tolu. Nice sportsmanship being displayed that time by Ken Matthews. Helping battle up. That's two quick fouls on Tolu Smith early in the second half. Yeah, Mississippi State. A, a bit bothered by some of Arkansas's defensive pressure now. Sure. Well, know this. Coach Eric Musselman has been to the NCAA tournament six of his eight seasons as a head coach. He still hasn't really erased that they can't get there. He, he's trying to prepare his team to go to Nashville and win it. I promise you that's his mindset. One-point game in Starkville. Much better defense here in the second half. Matthews, count the basket. Just muscles his defender out of the lane. He's going to the free throw line for one more. Yeah, Cam Matthews, who actually is a very cerebral player. You think about it. Back in 2021, his first year, he was an academic honor roll student. And he's a guy who, even though he doesn't shoot the basketball well, he knows his strengths and his weaknesses. And I love a basketball player that knows that because they're going to play to those strengths and weaknesses when they're in between the lines. He is Cam the Catalyst. Oh, I like that. Veteran. Cam the Catalyst. Oh, you, know, I, you know I always love a good alliteration. Yeah. 
Let's see if I can try to match that. Yeah, remember, fish over. facts are coming up later. <laughs> no better time. So three-point game. Arkansas trying to match the Matthews bucket. Matthews cut off Ellis. This one bounces over. One second to shoot. Davis couldn't get it off in time. That's actually not a worst-case scenario. Because of the way that Mississippi State struggles to make shots in the half court, it's actually better that they turn it over than to shoot a bad shot um, and, and allow Mississippi State to get out in the transition. Arkansas, when they've had their defense set today, they've been pretty good. I want to go back to a point. Hubbard just handed off number 13 in the white. What, what dimension does he bring to Mississippi State offensively? Well, one, he is an offensive threat to score, which is always good to have as a point guard. Two, he's a true point guard. He knows how to make other players better. Oh, he can rise and fire, too, can he? Well, that was my point one, right? He's always a threat <laughs> to score. And also, not only is he a threat to score, but when the shot clock is going down or where the offense isn't going the way that you want it, he can create his own shot. He has that high release, as you pointed out several times. He's got two triples today. Davis, not known necessarily as a three-point shooter. <laughs> let, let some folks in the first row know. I love hey, that. I can stretch it. <laughs> Davis has been animated today. Mark, I was reading that one, but he's whistled for his second foul. Mississippi. Our principal wouldn't watch. It's not a surprise to me, Kevin, because Janai Broom... Dalton Connect, I saw him at practice. I told him and Coach Rick Barnes that I was going to be talking about him at uh, SEC Media Days because he was the best player that I saw as I went around and traveled. And then Antonio Reeves at Kentucky doesn't get enough credit, but he'll have an opportunity to do that on the planes at Auburn today. Yes, he will. That's going to be a high-quality battle. 6 Eastern, ESPN, inside Neville Arena. Bell fighting with Mitchell. Bell's on the ground. A couple of players now are going after this wow. one. Okay. A lot of good hustle. Hubbard. No. This one's still alive. Who wants it? He was out of bounds. Arkansas was so Mississippi State is going to keep it so the crowd showing the appreciation for the hustle. Look, Coach Eric Musselman is clapping his hands because he likes the fact that the Razorbacks are competing. But what we just saw in that possession is the definition of Coach Chris Jans in Mississippi State basketball. You will not outwork them. You will not play harder than them. You will not be more physically tough than them. That blue-collar mentality. That's yeah, you the said DNA of the program. Program. You did better. Okay, I'll give you that. <laughs> blue-collar. Hard hat. We're, we're right. We're a tan. No, we're a tandem. We are a tandem. Well, it's like that ice cream sundae. You, you're coming in with the, with the ice cream. I'm just, I'm just putting some, what did I say, those Oreo crumples on the top? That's all. <laughs> You got your little sugar in. You got a little bit more energy here. Not one half. for uh, the whipped cream. The whipped cream is kind of redundant. I'd like some other toppings with different flavors. You know what I mean? The hold up here. So it's a three-point game. Lawson checking in for Mark. Okay. So must oh, third. Yeah, third foul at Mark. Well, and he's going with a couple of bigs. So this is interesting. Bigs for Arkansas. Uh, both Lawson and Mitchell give them. A little bit more of a size advantage so i'll be interested to watch that matchup between chandler lawson and cam matthews mississippi state was very effective getting to the rim and scoring in the paint early in this game arkansas's length as this one has unfolded has done a fine job trying to neutralize that. Look at Matthews. He is a wizard. How about the pass? Sneaking it through a couple of Razorbacks. Five-point game. The freshman, Hubbard, with the dime that time. So Matthews is into double figures. He is the lone Bulldog in double figures. Battle rises. That's good. So Caleb Battle having one of his better games in SEC play of late. His minutes have been up and down, and he's getting some consistent run today. And he's been certainly a difference maker. Hubbard, the answer on the other end. We mentioned earlier that Khalif Battle averaged 18 and 27 games at Temple. And right now, you think about this battle heating up a little bit offensively. Once again, a nice back cut 
Arkansas and Coach Eric Musselman is going to have to really check out the film and work on seeing ball and man. You hear that from basketball camps at a very early age. They're playing hard, but they've got to be a little bit better defensively of seeing both. A lot of points on that backdoor cut today. We've probably seen 15, maybe 15 yeah. to 20. That's one of the reasons why they've been so successful have the Bulldogs in the paint. Battle, bounce pass to Mitchell. Battle off the bounce. Pretty. Finds Mitchell. He's got it. Well, the dribble handoff, it has to be played just like the screen and roll, and it has to be defended like the screen and roll. Wasn't good communication that time by Mississippi State. Competitive till it remains close. Three-point game. And this is what we're talking about. On that handoff, Tolu Smith, he's trying to switch, but you see Davis was trying to get back, and it's even more challenging when it's on what we call uh, the, the corner pocket. Or, or, or the naked ball screen. That's where a lot of coaches like to run that because there's not a lot of help coming from the other side. Smith, power dribble. That's an offensive foul. Good call. Chicken wing, yeah. Right into the, to the sternum there of Mitchell. Coach James doesn't like it. He is the definition of tough. But you see there... The elbow doesn't have to go out. Yeah. Even if it's the shoulder going down, once that elbow goes out, Terry Oakley is better than official, very good official, has to call it. Yeah, a little pocket pass there from wow. Ellis to Mitchell. So Mitchell doing some good work. You know, if that's, that's on Smith, that's four. What a huge foul. It's been a – is that prior sequence there, the, the Tolu Smith offensive foul – Maybe stem from a little frustration today. It's, it's been a difficult day for him. Well, I definitely think he's missed quite a few layups. Uh, and, you know, he wants to win. Hey, so tomorrow, meanwhile, let's let's give you a quick reminder uh, over on ABC, the top-ranked South Carolina. Gamecocks unbeaten. They host Georgia. And so, of course, a game day crew is going to be there. Carolyn, Andrea, L, Holly, Cheney, the whole crew is there. That one tips off. On ABC at 1, game day gets you going at noon to kick things off. Yeah, there's a song called We Set the Trends. Don Staley is the definition of that in her attire and how her teams play. And I believe they're going to make another push for another national championship this season. Yeah, would not be surprised. Colonial Life Arena. It's been a party in that building today. Terry Oglesby. He's signaling with that swirling index finger that he might be heading to the monitor to take a peek at something here. Okay, Mitchell and Bell, they get tangled up. And Bell and Mitchell exchange some words. Emotions. Well, I think, well, first of all, we got a very good crew. And the crew right now, not only are they going to take a look at it, but this is always a good job to allow tempers and emotions to calm down a bit. So as they took a look, take a look, I guarantee you they've been monitoring Jimmy Bell this entire basketball game. Now, he's played with an edge. Not sure if it's a little bit of frustration, maybe not getting as many minutes as he wanted. He's a guy that started while Tolu Smith was out, got a ton of minutes. Uh, but, but he's been on edge the entire basketball game. And on the other side, you know, Mitchell's just not going to back down. Makai Mitchell, I don't think, really did anything. Let's see. Well, no, he put his elbow up. And, and Jimmy Bell Jr. is like, we're not having it, especially here in the hunt. So I, I like the fact that the officials are calming things down, going to make the discussion. And even if they don't call anything, it gives the tippers a little bit of time to eat. Yeah, I think this is a good uh, a good example of a let both players know, hey, yeah, enough of this stuff. I think we, we just saw the motion, too, from Terry Oglesby to say we're not going to upgrade anything, and it doesn't appear that's going to be the case. Now, for players who are watching right now, just to give you a little extra tidbit, whenever officials make a call like this, typically they're going to try to get the game under control. So now is a time when I would advise to attack the basket just a little bit more yeah. because they want to make sure they're going to keep the game under control. And a lot of times you can get whistles when you're attacking the rim. 
Hey, let's bring your attention to something very quickly, too. You mentioned it. We've got a, a wonderful crew. Terry Oglesby has officiated the last two national championships. Patrick Evans, Jason Baker. Yep, they, really are good. they are wearing these green wristbands this year. They are in honor of Reggie Cofer, their longtime supervisor of officials passed away before this season and so we, we've got a couple of the wristbands here you can see it on, on baker's left wrist there or that's uh terry oh that is baker it says land the plane land the plane that was a phrase reggie Cofer uh, was notorious yep. for uh extolling his his officials uh, they also say reggie proud so great initiative all, all we've seen basically every official out there wearing it this year yeah lost a battle to cancer uh, I think around June before the season started. And, you know, these officials are family, and I think yeah. wearing those green bracelets signify that. And there goes that hey, foul. go back to work in the paint. You said it. Mitchell's going to the line, and he's letting everybody know. Count it. Count it. What a huge play this time by Makai Mitchell. He takes his time, maybe got away with a little hook. But again, the officials... They're calling it a little bit tighter than Coach Chris Jans. He wanted to travel. But I like Makai Mitchell going to the basket. 12 points doubled his season, his season average on the day. Yep. He has been a, a valuable scoring presence of late. So this is now five double-figure scoring games of his last six. Fish, we are tied. You know, the fouls are starting to become a story here in the second half. There are five players in this game. That have either three or four uh, fouls. Have committed three or four, I should say. Murphy's gotten a lot of run in this one today. Kicks back out to Davis. Pulls up. Blocked. Mitchell with the stuff. And Arkansas continues to use its length to its advantage. Five block shots today. Ellis to Mitchell. Yeah, another. Arkansas back in front. For the first time since it was 4-0, they've only led for a couple of minutes. 4-3, you see at the bottom left. Matthews with the answer. A graceful lay-in at the cup. Easy like Sunday morning. Both teams right now starting to get a little bit more comfortable offensively. Let's see if Mississippi State tries to sit down here defensively if this crowd gets involved. Sizing up the zone, four to shoot. Deep hoist. That one's long. Mark rises. Davis has it. In transition, Matthews pulls it back out. So Mississippi State can run its stuff. This is Murphy. Steps back, stretches it from deep. New 20. Davis wants it. That's strong. It's a third look for the Bulldogs now. Arkansas's got to put their body against the Bulldogs and come up with that rebound. Now they've had a huge advantage now, 14 to 2 on the offensive glass. Backdoor cut. This one's taken away by Mitchell. Offensive rebounds. You just saw 13 to 2. Razorbacks right where they want to be. 48 up, approaching the halfway point in the second half. Mitchell screen and roll again got blocked has it back shot clock has not reset Davis is left open misfires and Matthews down with the board the Bulldogs have had so much success going to the interior let's see if they can try to get the basketball back inside to the paint Murphy barges into Mitchell knocked out and we step aside with 9.54 to go. Makai Mitchell has come alive. It's all Bracketology, we have it for you. Joe Lunardi is projecting nine teams out of two conferences in the NCAA tournament field. If the season ended today, it doesn't. We've got a little ways to go. However, the SEC is one of those conferences. Big 12 the other. And Mississippi State, according to many, tournament caliber team would be one of those nine. Right now, it's just an important basketball game for, for both teams, right? And so for Mississippi State, they're in a situation where you lose a home game to an Arkansas team whose net ranking is 132. That's going to do incredible damage to your overall resume. 
And so you just don't want to leave it in the hands of the committee when you can control your own destiny. That's what the Bulldogs are trying to do. On the other hand, Arkansas seems to be finding their swagger here in Starkville, Mississippi. Yeah, I, I think I would underscore that word. They have got a little swag going right now. They've got their groove back. And Battle, who has played some impactful minutes in this game, is headed right back to the free throw line. Well, the 6'5", 185, Hillside, New Jersey native has always been prolific. You think about when he was at Temple, he actually ranked 10th in the NCAA in free throw percentage, almost 90%, 89.8%. Uh, he's a guy who's played multiple games, 1,000-point score, and that's one of the reasons why I think the expectations and the outlook were so bright for Arkansas especially after you knocked off Purdue in an exhibition game. Then you thought they were finding it after they beat Duke, but they've dealt with health issues. Remember, Jalen Graham not in this game, Brazil not in this basketball game, and still they have a one-point lead against a team who's knocked off Auburn and Tennessee in this building. You said they've got some swagger going. How has their chemistry looked, continuity looked on the floor today? It just looks like they're playing as one collective unit yeah. versus forcing shots. And I think a lot of that stems from Debo Davis coming back to the program. That three is off the mark. The pass. Yeah, offensive rebound. Mississippi State just continues to hammer the offensive glass. Despite that, they're still down one. Free throws coming for the dogs. Coach Eric Musselman, because Jalen Graham was not in this basketball game, decided to go with small ball. But I think it's very important that the viewers know that they're not exactly that small. Jeremiah Davenport, the transfer from Cincinnati, is 6'6", 215 pounds. Khalif Battle is 6'5". Debo Davis is 6'6". L. Ellis is 6'3". So they're not that undersized. They actually match up with Mississippi State, who kind of plays a small lineup with Cam Matthews at the, kind of at 6'5", as well. Yeah, long, rangy. Look at that number, by the way, at the bottom. Mississippi State, they cashed in on one free throw there. Plus 11 on the offensive glass today. Sure. I like the chess move by Coach Jan, slowing Arkansas down, giving them less time to operate in the half court by going 2-2-1 two, two, back to this 2-3 zone. Davis tried to free up Ellis, three from the corner, left short by Battle. Hubbard, eyes up, trying to get past Ellis, blows oh. by, scores! Love the stutter step inside out and then the kiss off of the window. A little more life back in the building. Battle tries to attack the zone. Davis gets inside. Almost traveled that time. Tend to shoot. Ellis, the spin. Davis passes up the three, steps into the mid range. Up in the air, bounces out. Davenport, the follow. That's what I mean by the size. Davenport at 6'6", 215, was actually matched up on that rebound against a 5'10", Josh Hubbard. That's why he was able to be successful. First basket, Damian for the fifth-year senior from Cincinnati, a well-timed hoop. Arkansas trying to figure out what defense they're in. I think they are going to a 2-3 zone. They're matching up out of it. They want Mississippi State to settle from the perimeter here. Both teams have zoned a lot in the second half. Two to shoot. Hubbard. No. And a new 20. That's the 15th offensive rebound for one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the SEC. Moore rises. Puts it in. Shaquille Moore. It's a competitive SEC battle. Ellis with the answer, not that time. Davenport crashing the glass hard now on consecutive possessions. Mississippi this past class. Here's some of the numbers that are pertinent to the way this one has unfolded. It's a three-point game. Mississippi State with a lead. So Chris Jans, he has joked on several occasions at times this year. He goes, I'm just happy. Josh Hubbard's playing on this side of the state. Remember, he was yeah. previously committed to Ole Miss. Kermit Davis, 
gets fired around this time a year ago. He decommits, opens things up. Chris Jans says, hey, come over to this side of the state and be one of my playmakers. And what a difference maker the freshman has been this year for a 16 and 8 team that is very much tournament caliber. One point game though with Arkansas in town. Murphy rises. Mitchell blocked him. Murphy stuck with it. Three point lead. You can tell by the body language though. This Razorback team's a little bit different. Body language, hungry for a win. Missed the last six of their seven field goals, going through a drought, which tends to happen against a team like Mississippi State. 6.20 to go. Battle, size it up, Matthews. Rises, puts it up, count it! And the foul! Kayla Battle with an SEC best, 16 points today and counting. Yeah, grown man finish by Khalif Battle. And we talked about their size, right? So it's interesting. Khalif Battle, he's playing the wing. You can say they're playing with four guards, but that's against uh, kind of the power forward or, or four men from Mississippi State. Now, Mississippi State has actually gone with a couple of bigs and Keyshawn Murphy, who was out in and out with the season, and Jimmy Bell Jr. My question is, even though Tolu Smith has four fouls if we coach Jans, when do you insert him back into this basketball game? What's the time uh, you're looking at for well, Smith? Well, I, I would bring him in rather soon, rather, uh, sooner rather than later, simply because you don't want to be playing from behind even though you're at home. You want to put the game pressure on your opponent, not allow it to get to your players. Matthews spins, goes up, draws the foul. And that's on Davenport. Again, the whistle is it'll be becoming a very important factor. Both teams in the bonus. There is Smith staying warm on the bike. Yeah. Cam Matthews headed to the free throw line. It's, it's an adventure. Uh, it has been for Matthews at the line. He's about 55% at the stripe. He has been a very important factor in this game, uh, even despite or outside of just the scoring. Damian, Mississippi State got off to a fast-paced hot start. They led for much of the first half by as many as eight, but that was all. Arkansas was able to close the gap. They went into the breakdown five. And this has been a very even, very competitive second half that has been played within and a couple of points either way. Yeah, back to the 2-2-1. Two, two, Mississippi State really focusing on trying to slow Arkansas down, give them a shorter shot clock here in the half court. Now they're starting their offense against a 2-3 zone with about 14 seconds left. Eight to shoot. Davenport slices in. He's got battle again. The fadeaway falls through. Tough shot. Boy, it has been a... The reincarnation of Caleb Battle today. Well, his minutes were limited the last couple against Tennessee and Georgia. Different story today. There is a near turnover, but a foul, a reach in by the Razorbacks. Yeah, that's good on call. Mitchell. Well, and Jason was right there. And that's five. No, I take oh, it back. No, that's sorry, my that's mistake. Third. That's, that's my mistake. Third. Yeah, that's his third. Well, I'm glad you claimed that. Listen, you all can't see us here, but Kevin <laughs> was throwing up, up the number five <laughs> number. So that's why we're a team. You acknowledge that turnover. I, will, I, I turn will. it over too sometimes. Hey, I will let but the But you didn't have show. to take it, though. You didn't have to take it. I'm proud of you, man. Because I said five with confidence because that's how much I trust you. Well, listen, you know I'm an honorable man. <laughs> <laughs> Always here to do the right thing. You know, mom told me to do the right thing. So, meanwhile, Mississippi State goes back up by two. There are a couple of Razorbacks playing with four fouls. It's Mark and Battle. How about Jimmy Bell Jr.? He started 112 of 139 games. That includes Juco. And he's actually doing a nice job in that role coming off of the bench. He knew what position he was going to be in. He was going to play behind Tolu Smith. But I think that his attitude has actually been really good considering he got accustomed to starting and playing so many minutes. And now this pivotal role he's playing down the stretch, Coach Jans trusts him. Battle slices in. The floater left it short. That one looked like it hit the timer, didn't it? So, or in part, hit the rim. Davenport has to hoist, and the rebound's down, rebound down to Mississippi State. 
thought Battle's shot might have hit the rim. Well, it did, I believe. I, and Coach Eric Musselman and his staff believe that as well. And that's what they were trying to actually tell the officials. So, nevertheless, uh, anywho, it's now just history. Mississippi State by two. Timer draining on this side with four to shoot. Hubbard back over to Matthews off his fingertips. Did he get it off? They say he did. And punched out by the Bulldogs with 4.02 to go. So a little chaos on either end. Yeah, well, it's a strength and weakness of Mississippi State. They allow themselves offensively to get under five in the shot clock really often. And that is because they like to take good shots, which allows them to keep their defense set. The problem is those shots are often contested, and they don't make a lot, which is why they have some struggles offensively. Mitchell attacks, rises with the left. He's fouled. Makai Mitchell has a couple of free throws when we come back that could tie things up. All of those teams have to get focused right now. And then if you're the last four in, you might as well be playing like it's the SEC tournament right, right now because you have to continue to win basketball games. Other teams below you are going to win games. Teams above you could potentially lose games. But for those teams that want championships or even to dance, their March Madness starts now in February. So if, I, if I'm hearing you right, create some urgency, start to build momentum now. Well, we have it right here in this game. Yep. Think about it. For Mississippi State, you're a team that was in Joe Renardi's last four in. You were in the last four buys. Remind you, 132 is the current net ranking of Arkansas, which will go up probably quite a bit if they win here today. But this is a game you need to win. We talked about their upcoming schedule. You got the likes of Ole Miss at LSU, AM, Auburn, Kentucky. This is one where you have to take care of business, and it's not at 59 59. After the Makai Mitchell free throws, oh wow, that's a foul on Tremont Mark, and I can say it confidently now that is the fifth foul on <laughs> <You> Team <sure>? Mark. <laughs> uh, bring it out the calculator, man. Double check on all the math here. 334 to go. Arkansas has just lost its leading score. And now, we haven't talked about him enough being in foul trouble, right? What he would have added to to Arkansas. You think about these teams being knotted at 59-59. Both teams have showed an ability to score much more points than that. But I give credit. Nice, long defensively. And the teams collectively, what, 6 of 30 from the three-point line. <laughs> yeah. It has been a game played at the rim and recently at the free-throw line. So, Hubbard... Now has a second coming up. Arkansas, let's just fill you in once again. Without Trevin Brazil for a sixth straight game. Yep. No Jalen Graham today. Was hurt in that Tennessee game on Wednesday. And now without their leading scorer, these are difference makers that the Hogs are without. How pivotal is that going to be the final 330? Well, I'll tell you what I would do if I'm the Razorbacks. I'm going right at Tolu Smith. And Makai Mitchell's actually waving his hand. I think he wants the basketball. If you told him, you got to realize your value and don't get a careless foul. He just checked in playing with the four. Mitchell has been on a rampage today. It's a new career high. 19 for Mitchell. It was the foot speed of Mitchell, and tolu has been over there on the sideline, probably a little stiff. He's got to get help from the weak side on that screen and roll. We are tied up at 61 with less than three to go. Pivotal mid-February conference battle. Hubbard, the step back. That bounces out. Tolu's got his hands on it. Smith lost it. Ball back to Arkansas. Tolu's a little frustrated, and he should be. They're coming at him on the offensive end. Watch Makai Mitchell there. See on that roll. If you can't, Matthews, you can't leave him wide open. He was concerned about Davenport on the perimeter. You've got to contest, contest at the perimeter, but protect the basket at all times first.
Battle gets free. The leaner left short. Mitchell, he's got 21. Arkansas back in front. Yeah, and Tolu can't play timid. He's got to be his aggressive self. Right now, they're down two. If I'm Tolu, be cautious, but you want to go right at Mitchell. Starting to go to work. Davis came over to help momentarily, and Smith picks up the dribble. Two to play. Matthews the spin. Puts it up. Count it. And the foul. Well, you know what we call that, Fitz. That's a George Durbin old school finger roll. Cam Matthews turning lemons into lemonade. There he goes with that Earl of Pearl spin, and there it is with the finger roll. Much needed basket as well as this free throw. Very crucial for Cam Matthews as he goes to the foul line now. Kayla Battle just fouled out for Arkansas. That is 18 points going to the free, uh, going to the bench, I should say. Cam Matthews in conference games only shooting 38% from the free throw line. It's a big one here. 54% overall. It's been an adventure. He missed the only one, or he's missed one at the stripe today. And so we stay tied. 63 up, less than two to play. The Bulldogs trying to protect this home court. Looking for the third straight win. Ellis bumped by Hubbard. Ellis has had a quiet yet successful game. We have wondered who was going to assert themselves at the point guard role. And he's got four assists on today. Four points. He's been very efficient. He's gotten the basketball to the people who need to have it. Both teams are in the double bonus, so it's two free throws on every whistle the rest of the way. Well, it's a proven score, 843 points in two seasons at Louisville. This is Arkansas back in front, Damian, by two. They trailed five at the break, led for much of that first half, and in the second, playing with quite a bit of continuity on both ends of the floor and they've gotten big games from Mitchell from battle more the response make it Hubbard or tied up again Mitchell Starting to go to work again. Bounce pass. That was a dangerous near giveaway. Went off of Matthews' hands. Out of bounds with nine to shoot. And right now, I'm interested to see if Mississippi State stays in a 2-3 zone. No, they match up because it's nine seconds and go man-to-man -man for rebounding position. Davis has it. Back to Ellis. Four to shoot. Jump stop into the oh. paint. Scores it. Arkansas by two with 103 to go. Mississippi State back on this end. Hubbard rises. Got it. Four three. Timeout, Mississippi State. They're back in front by one. Well, we talked about speed. The latest Josh Hubbard triple has the home team, Damian, back up by one. What do the Hodge do here? 58.3 to go. Yeah, L. Ellis has actually done a nice job of making the right decisions. For Mississippi State, on the other hand, they went from 2-3 zone. Now they're in man-to-man. -man. Offensive glass is going to be critical, but I would still go inside to Makai Mitchell or at least put Tolu in some type of ball screen knowing he has four fouls. So Mitchell just set the screen for Ellis. Davis was looking for him. 12 to shoot. This is Jeremiah Davenport. There Back to is. Mitchell. He's having a career game. Goes up with the left. Bounces out. Lawson got his hands on it. Matthews clears it. Mitchell has to foul Matthews with 29.4 to go. Cam Matthews going back to the free throw line. Well, I actually don't mind that foul. Now, I don't know that Coach Eric Musselman loved it. I think he's frustrated because Lawson didn't get called uh, for a foul. But from my angle... I didn't see that he got fouled. And maybe Musselman wanted to try to trap, but he fouled a guy who's shooting 34% in SEC play. Yeah. Today he's been four of six. 
This is the senior leader, the, the captain, if you will, for this Mississippi State team. He's got one more here at the line at a one-possession game with 29.4 to go. Plenty so, of timeouts left yeah. for both of these coaches. I think if you make this, then if you coach Jans, you want to try to get your guys set. Matthews misses some wow. boats, and that really opens things up here with 26 to go. Musselman, he's got three timeouts. He is going to use one here. And that clock ran, ran a little too long. We'll add a few more seconds. Quick 30-second timeout in Starkville. He matched up against Makai Mitchell on that block, and Tolu's there to help. There he is, down by the right block. The Matthews missed free throws on the other end. Gives Arkansas a chance to maybe win it at the horn. 16 seconds. Ellis drives, finds Davis, gets into the paint, slips it to Mitchell. Lost it. Moore takes it away. Arkansas now has the foul with 7.7 to go. Davenport sending Shaquille Moore to the line. And the Mississippi State rugged defensive pressure creates the turnover. At the quintessential time. Well, we just showed Khalif Battle on that sideline. That's the guy who probably would have been taking the shot. Khalif Battle out with five fouls. And what I noticed on that previous trip, it was a nice chess move because Chris Jans didn't allow Tolu Smith to stay on Makai Mitchell. He knew that's what Coach Eric Musselman was going to do. So he put Cam Matthews on him to improve the foot speed, and that dissuaded L. Ellis from going to the screen as usual. I thought it was a nice decision. Yeah, critical moment. And so now with 7.7 to go, Shaquille Moore, the senior from Greensboro, he's a veteran, his third year here in Starkville, has one more to go. Keep in mind, both coaches with a pair of timeouts. Even if he hits this, it's still a one-possession game, and it is a three-point lead for Mississippi State. Critical makes at the line by the veteran Moore after the stop on the other end. So, Kevin, <laughs> this is always interesting. Appreciate the courtesy left. <laughs> Seven point seven. No, they're, like trying to, they're, trying, they're trying to protect home court, pick up their third straight win, and get to 500 in league play. Seven seconds to go. It's Ellis. He's got it across the timeline. Fouled just before the pass to Mitchell. And so he goes to the free throw line with 3.6 to go. So even going back to your point, you force the hand of your opposition, too, in this situation. Well, and I don't even know if he was trying to foul, but he certainly got the foul called. So it gives us an opportunity to put our experiment to the test. <laughs> right? Again, first and foremost, he has to make the first one. Now, if he does make the first one, then... And here oh, we go. And, you know, this was L. Ellis's first trip to the free throw line it's hard, since man. January 20th. He's barely been there. And how about Coach Jans? He's spot on it. Now he puts his two bigs in the game to make sure that he secures the rebound. You see it time and time again in college basketball. While we got a sec, is there even enough time to make one and foul the inbound pass? Sure. Send to There's Mississippi enough time State. to do that. Misses it, tapped out, two seconds. Mitchell just fouled Matthews with 1.7. So, I, you know, you're putting a free throw shooter at the line of the other end who his last trip to the strike missed them both. So this is by no means over just yet. Cam Matthews, all he has to do is make one. And that virtually <laughs> ends it. <laughs> The man, well, though, in the bottom right. Listen, and it's not just Cam <laughs> Matthews. Mississippi State's 18 of 13 on the night from the free throw line. Uh, so they have to continue to improve that as a team. All right, there it is. Cam Matthews, in a lot of ways, the heartbeat. As Chris Chan says, the personality of our team Listen, he's is got likely the final blow. He's got a double-double. Yep. Cam Matthews has a double-double, 17 points, 10 rebounds. Think about if he continued to improve. It's his fifth double-double for his career. Well, only fitting it. He got a second chance at that line with, in the waning seconds to close it out. Matthews does it. 
hard-fought effort by this Razorbacks team. They come up short, and Mississippi State now makes it nine.